Hey everyone, welcome back to KC3D Sparks. Today we are going to be creating a weapons rack. So this is actually a request from my husband, so thank you for the request. So I will be showing how to actually model the weapons rack and then printing it out afterward. I don't know if the printing out is going to be a separate video or not yet. I'll just see how long this video takes and then I'll go from there. But like I said, I'll model out and show you guys how to do the weapons rack and then I'll also model some basic weapons to actually go on it as well and hopefully print them as well. They are gonna be basic, like I said, so don't expect anything too fancy. I am going to speed model through them though. I'm not going to show you guys how to do them because since they are so basic, I just, if you guys watch them, you'll probably be able to figure out how to model them as well. But of course, if you have any questions or concerns or something, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So for our scene, I will be modeling in inches. Of course, model with whatever you're comfortable with, but I just like modeling in inches. And then when I go to print, I'll have to convert to millimeters because that's what my printer likes to work with. I have my grid scale set to quarter of an inch and I am just starting with a default cube here. But before we jump into edit mode, I wanna go ahead and just change the dimensions of this so we can just worry about modeling the basic rack itself. And so for the X axis, we are going to do one and a half inches. For the Y axis, we're going to do 0.15 inches. And for the height, we're gonna go ahead and do 0.6, a little bit more than half an inch. Perfect. All right, so now that we have that set up, we will go ahead and tab into edit mode. I'm gonna hide our menu because we don't need that anymore. So one thing I will wanna do so I can make sure I got the legs exactly the same, I'm going to cut this in half by hitting Control R and adding a loop. And then I'm going to hit Z to go into wireframe view, deselect everything with A, border select these, X to delete the vertices, add modifier, mirror, and add clipping. Now I like to select everything, make sure it's all good. Perfect. Awesome. So I'm just going to go hit the number one to go into front view, Z to get out of wireframe, and get control R again to add in a loop to, for our table leg. I want it kind of chunky, so I want it probably like that and do another loop up here for the top of the rack. So a little bit thick again, like I said, that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to go down here, grab these three faces, and delete them. So that way they're nice and cut out. Gonna hit edge F to face that off. So that's nice and closed for us now. Perfect. Now I'm actually gonna tab back out of edit mode. No, I'm not. I forgot to do the feet. So I want to add a little bit of detail to make it actually stand. Is that thick enough? I'll do it a little bit thicker. I want to grab these two faces so I can add some detail, kind of like with what I did with the trestle table in a previous video. Hit E to extrude and then size along the Y axis. Perfect. And then I want to go ahead and just bring these down and maybe back a little. Just a cute little detail. Perfect. And I will be adding a subdivision surface modifier later to smooth that out a little bit. First, I'm going to apply the mirror modifier and I wanna get rid of this loop. So I'm just gonna hit X, edge loops, and that is now gone. Reason for that is I'm going to add in a lot of loops here so that way all of my notches are set perfectly. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control R and hit 25, enter. So now I have 25 loops set perfectly in a row for me. Now with that, I'm still in edge select here. I'm going to pick every third one. And you'll see in a second with how this will work. Give me one second. Okay, now that I have all of those selected, I'm just gonna go into front view and drag those down. About there, you know, whatever your preference may be. 
Awesome. So these are going to be like the notches where the sword handles or the axes or whatever are going to rest so that way they're not all like, you know, sliding against each other. They each have their own space. And then, you know, just because since it is a miniature, it's easy. So, you know, if someone hits the table, they're not all going to one end. And it just, I thought it would be a little bit better design for a mini. So I will go ahead and add that subdivision surface modifier now. And we're going to sharpen basically everything except for those notches. So I'm going to hit Z for wireframe view again. Whoops, not that. I'm going to hit B for border select, shift E to grab those. But I am going to reselect these ones and unsharpen them by just hitting shift E again and going down a little bit. I don't want it all the way unsharpened just enough to make it look nice and rounded. A little bit more rounded, that is. I think that looks good. All right, let's tap back into edit mode. We're going to go back into wireframe view and we're going to select all of these top vertices. Whoop. I want this and this. And let's do shift E. All right. Now, before I do everything else, what we want to do is actually cut out the holes that the swords and axes and the handles will actually go through. So let's just go into side view. Eh, let's go into top view. Control R, scroll up, so we get two. What? Okay, not sure why that's happening. It worked yesterday, so I'm not sure what I did differently, but before we go ahead and lower those vertices and sharpen everything, I'm gonna add in these two loops for the holes. Like I said before, we're just going to size them along the Y axis to make it a little bit bigger. Mm. Out there looks good. Okay. So anyway, let's go into vertice mode and we're going to have to select everything that we need. Go into front view and bring that down again. Interesting. Okay. Let me just go ahead and resharpen all of this back. And then what we will do, I'm going to go ahead and get the face view here. And we are going to select all of these to be cut out. And don't forget the bottom ones. All right. And then, just like we did earlier, we just want to close all of these holes up. Awesome. So just like before, we want to go ahead and sharpen a lot of the edges. So let's go ahead and go into wireframe view, deselect everything, and start selecting all of these vertices. Basically all we're doing the subdivision surface modifier for is to get this nice curve for the notches. That's just a personal preference that I have. Obviously you guys can sharpen less if you want or not even add in the notches if you're not interested you could even just leave it as the holes and not have them at all if you're not worried about everything getting jumbled together total personal preference so i think that looks pretty good for what i'm going to oh i forgot to sharpen some of these edges um <laughs> you know looking over your model is always good before you print it out <laughs> Um, but this is pretty good. I'm probably going to stop it here and show you guys how I modeled the sword axe and battle axe. 
So if you're interested in modeling your own, you can use that as a starting point and then go crazy with your own details and that kind of thing. So again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the box below. And if I have time, I'll put the video of the rack and the weapons printing in the same video. But if it ends up being a lot longer, I'm probably just going to upload a separate video a little bit after this modeling video comes up. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, again, please put them in the comments. I really appreciate any likes and subscribes. It really lets me know that you guys are liking what I'm putting out. And don't forget to send me requests. I love requests and, you know, tack tackling any kinds of modeling issues that you guys are having. So I will see you guys next time.